Hello, everybody, and welcome. We are here at the Detroit Model and Toys Car Meet, and we are uh, meeting with Uncle Jim, and we're going to take a look around the event. Now, let's just hop right into it. Let's not, uh, let's not fuss about. Come on. Hey, Uncle Jim. We are here. Uh, we're here on camera with you now, just to let you know. <laughs> Good to see you. Good, Good see to you. see you, man. I'm glad you guys came. So, uh, so what do we got going on here today? I'm selling my stuff. This is probably the last of my uh, my leftover stuff from all these 30 years of collecting. Right. And that's what this whole flea market's about. Have you guys been around yet? Uh, we we took a little look around before we started filming. You know, there's a lot of good stuff here today. Let me finish this transaction. Yeah, yeah. finish your transaction. Great. So what what is it that you like about that? What they don't like car? is they they did a two of these cars. They did the P Trail P34 or the six wheel car. Yeah. They use the same wheels for the front of this. They look small, but the wheels themselves are brilliant. Is yeah. they are. I just sold that six wheeler to Tony. He deserves it too. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's a, for a TS, a TS 16 was an unsuccessful car, but it's a great model. Yeah, right. Well, there you go. I found a home. Not many guys recognize that, Rich. I'm really awesome. glad you did. Now, if I find some NASCAR guys. Yeah, you're right. good luck on that one. All right, buddy. I'll see you later. So from what I'm gathering here, we got loads of enthusiasts here just swapping and selling some of their, yeah. some of their, some of their cars and such. Yeah, like I, I've been telling you guys over and over, uh, all of us guys who were collecting cars in the 60s and 70s and yeah. collecting broken models like these to rebuild someday right. from toy shows. And in, in the 90s, they made some really fine models. And, and, you know, they, they, they're like boxed art as far as I'm concerned. Right. And it would take us it would take us weeks to build a model like that with that much detail. So now all this stuff has become superfluous. Huh. It's a shame, though, because it breaks my heart, dude. Hey, how you doing, buddy? Yeah, good, 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 good to see you. Good to see you. You want any old models? Uh, or do you have a collection of your own? Oh, my wife thinks I have more than enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's sort of the the heart and soul of this this hobby, though. Was at the beginning. Oh yeah, yeah. You yeah. were taking the, these yeah. these toy cars. And All these them. guys were collecting cars like this, bodies like this, yeah. and either um, finding the original chassis or making their own. Right. Uh, but now we can we can buy them, you know, and and uh, s save the time. Well, it's still wonderful to build a model. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I love building models. Yeah. A lot of guys get so into it that there's resin cast bodies that are unique and sometimes one of a kind. In this case, that, that's what's going on here. That's why they can ask $75 to $40 for a resin body like that. Right. Um, these are old slot cars. And there are guys who collect cars uh, and want them to be just like they were when they were kids. Mm. You know, they're missing, these are missing tigers, but these are projects that somebody can take up. Right. Now, now here we're getting into uh, the era of thought car business. I abhor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of guys still love this era because they grew up in it, but these are what they call womp womp cars. Gotcha. If you take a look, you know, they're out of scale, they're light as a feather, uh, they look at the tires, the front tires. They're what I call thingies, just flying wedges. These cars go so fast that where our cars take 19 seconds to do a lap, they can do it in three seconds. Wow! Because the aerodynamics yeah. hold the car down. Yeah. Guys here, you know, there's a lot of guys who just love these Cox models. When they were a kid, they would collect 124 scale Cox models. Uh, some of them are rusted, some of them are longer. But this size car is what you run at the, at the, uh, the commercial trucks. Right. Call them. Right. right. All this on this table right here is mine, a vintage. When, when it comes to 124 scale, I'm out of my league. Yeah. Tell us about these cars. Okay. Are these original boxes? That no, no. Come the in? boxes I put them in. It's a lot easier to store uh, store the store the cars in a box like that. They're a lot easier to, to put in transport and all that. Plus, they don't get dirty in that. Right. And as, right. as you can see. Oh, here. Let's look at this one right here. Okay. This is a Champion, which is a 124th car. It's Ford GT Roadster, and it, of course, I went out and made it paint. Made it, it, was, uh, it was colored blue, 
but I went out there and made it the maize and blue. Hey, 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 all right, for right down the road. Yeah, right down the road. Isn't it? Well, this car's for sale, Nick? Yes, these are all for sale, yes. So what you've done as, as a collector is you found these models at shows and put them together. Yes, or a lot of them were just in pieces. A lot of them were just pieces and, and parts. And I go out there, take the parts, and go out, reassemble them, make sure they got the correct parts in them and that. And I'll go out there and take the car and customize it in that. Like I say, this this was a blue paint. Yeah, make, uh, yeah. I went out there and put the maize stripes on here. Look at those. And also, you notice the helmet. Yes. See how the, the helmet, see. Now this was a clear body, Nick? Yeah, that was a clear body painted by Champion and that. that oh, was it a came, it yeah, came painted? Came, came pre-painted, yes. So you added the stripes. I added the stripes also on the, on the it's also, a, it's a Champion and it's it's kind of a rare, you know, and that. But we have that. It's pretty these, cool. These days, where do you run these? Oh, well, it's getting harder to find. It's getting real hard to find. The track that we, that local track, it was called Don River Speedway. The, the gentleman is finally selling out, and he is moving. The tracks are going to Indiana, but we do have one guy that has a track in his basement. It's called Zuto Speedway. Yeah. Bob Manzetti's got that. And, we, and he made he he went out there and made the track. And it's a beautiful track. And then you'll probably you can see him on Facebook, Zudo Speedway in that. And you'll see some of the cars. Now Nick, we used to call those commercial commercial tracks that yeah. don't Yes, together. yes. Would you consider his track a commercial track? Yes. Even yes. though it's a Yes, it is. Yes, and, that is. and it's also 124th lane spacing, and that the one 124th lane spacing has a lot to do with this because if you get the 32nd cars, they'll, they'll touch each other. Oh, Jimmy, I got to right. cut in here for one minute. Okay. <laughs> to tell everybody that he and I, this old guy yeah. and I, yeah. been racing since 1963. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You're not that old. Yeah, I'm 74. <laughs> yes. I'm 72. So we've been Acting racing like 27. 1963. Yes. His hobby shop yeah. against my hobby shop. Right. Yeah. right. Me and this guy, we used to race at in Wayne Hobby in 64, 65. Yeah. Tell them about how you used to sneak in there. And that used to, you were supposed to be going somewhere. Okay. Oh, yeah. And what, your mom would drop you off? That's right. And where would you go? Wayne Hobby. Yeah, and <laughs> I half had, hour for a half hour, and I'd show up at catechism, but I didn't know that they were um, recording my attendance. Right, my <laughs> right, and that was back in '64, '65. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I've known, I've known, I've known this man for a long time in that. Yeah, yeah and we, we still had, race. Hey, we still race. That's yeah. awesome. You yeah. guys have quite yeah. a history in the in the oh, sport. Then, yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it, it, it is a sport. I mean, it's collecting and building and racing. That. Right. Of course. It's fun. Yeah, yeah. It is a thing. It's all about having fun. Exactly, right? That's that's yeah. his heart and soul. Yeah, and of course, when you beat me all the time, that's what I really <laughs> that's, my... Yeah, that's what he'd like you to believe. Yeah, he does. He, 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 does a, he, he runs real good. Yeah, yeah. We have, we run at a basement track. It's a commercial track that a person purchased, and he has it, and he has it in his basement we race in that. And the, the, the gentleman offers up his basement every Thursday. We go down there and race in that. And, we have a fun time in that. We don't race for money or nothing like that. It's just bragging rights for one week and that. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. And that's, yeah. that's, that's, yeah. Yes, it does. Is it, a, is it a fairly detailed track or has he just got that basic? It's just a basic track. It is not as detailed as AC, Jimmy Atard's AC to car. Yeah. His track, I love going there, just enjoying the scenery, <laughs> what he goes out there and, and he goes out there and moves. His track is a very, very technical track. Because the descend, the, the decreasing radius on a curve plus how they come together in that, you got to be very astute in running that. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We we have gotten. Uh, Thanks, Nick. I'll pay right. you later. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs> oh wait, I gotta get I gotta get Mark over here. Just a minute. Hang yeah, on. Yeah. Hold, hold. I'd like to introduce you to the track owner that we race at every Thursday. It's Mark Henderson, half of the M&M Speedway, which he is. 
he, he has, we are going to have a, a Trans Am inaugural proxy race this coming Saturday at that. And Mark, can you tell them about your track? It's an 80 footer uh, linear foot uh, track that uh, we got from Professor Motor, uh, God rest his soul. Uh, he passed here uh, recently and uh, we bought the track from him and uh, we, we moved it and changed the name into uh, Mike Grigsby's private home here in Redford and uh, we've been uh, updating it and uh, racing on it since uh, 15, uh, 2015 and uh, it's it's a great thing. We have regular Thursday night outings. First off, would you call your track a commercial track? It was made as a commercial track. Ah. It, it's a wood, it's a wood uh, uh, and, and routed track. And uh, it's, uh, but it was commercially made, but we fit it into a house. Okay, let's, let's explain the difference between a 124th scale commercial car, that size, and these are the size of the cars that you race on your trip. That's correct. Now They're, these are just bodies, but we're trying to demonstrate the difference in size. Yes. Can you race? A 124 scale car on your track? We can, but we we have the lane spacing, but not for side by side. We can race either one and three lane, or two and four lane, okay. or one and okay. four lane. But know. when you go to 132, Second, we have the lane, which spacing. is usually a home scale. But you have this track in your home, and the guys who come over. Uh, this is Mike Grigsby's home in ah. Redford. So uh, I wanted I wanted to explain the difference. Yeah, to, to yeah, yeah. So yeah. all around this fleet, uh, this sale, you'll find 124 and 132nd scale cars. Yes. 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 And some HO, the smaller HO cars too. Right. Yep. Right. Um, I pick these up. Yeah. These were for sale. These are Trans Am cars. Oh yeah. And we'll have. Why don't you hold these cars here so we can demonstrate what you were talking about. That's, is that Dan Gurney's car? This is Dan Gurney's car, and this is Sam Posey's car. Oh, there, and, um, so and so these, these are examples of tr what Trans Am cars were. Yeah, the pony cars, the, uh, the sedans that came out of Detroit. Uh, and so, uh, and they were just, you know, they're mostly basically the same as what you can get from the car dealerships. They just painted them up, put roll bars, put, you know, safety equipment in there. But Two door sedans. Two door sedans. Back seat. No, no back seat. Had to have a back seat. Okay, I had to have, had a, back to have a back seat. Right, okay. If they didn't have a back seat, they considered it a sports car. And this is oh, okay. That's why the GT350 was right? Right, 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 right. right. Okay. So these type of cars are the Mustangs, the Camaros. And uh, different types of Mustangs and different years of Camaros javelins. and Javelins. That's pretty cool. You're going to be kind of reviving a bit of racing history. For, oh, yes. For, 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 you know, for that, for that moment. That's awesome. Um, My dad used to race in the Trans Am, and, uh, but there was uh, the under two liter, which is the uh, four cylinder engines and stuff. But uh, he ran back in 67. And uh, so he ran for a few years. And, uh, but uh, he ended up being a, a rally car driver, and uh, he got more seat time. You know, because the, the Trans Ams were between four and six hours, and on the rally you get a lot more seat time, and that's what he was looking for. So, that's awesome. But he was a professional racer, and that's why I'm doing this. That's really cool. He was a professional. That now that's well, I mean, he, he had a profession, a, a, a Dearborn police officer, but uh, he he did this for uh, entertainment, and uh, but he also wanted to learn how to drive better. Right. And he he had to know how the car handled. Yeah. You know, in order to drive better, and he became a better police officer in driving, and by having you know this background. That stuff. makes sense. You know, yep. they're complementary skills in many ways. You know. Yes. So, right. so you know, he 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 learns how to drive better as a police officer, how to how to handle that car, but also. You can go out on uh, on your free time and drive on the rally stage or drive a Trans Am vehicle, you know? He, uh, on many occasions, was able to catch people who thought they couldn't get caught. They were driving fa much faster cars. And, you know, the, and the big Ford... Uh, uh, big police cars weren't made to be, you know, they're not a sports car by any type, and you had to really manhandle them around, and my dad learned how to handle them in order to keep the car that they were chasing in, in range, and they both said, how come I got caught, you know, because my dad was driving, <laughs> you, were, you, were, you know. You, you were racing a racer, you know what I mean, you were trying to get away from a racer himself. That's really cool, I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a great way to... To honor him in many ways, to remember him is to, to, to have these these races, you know, these Trans Am races. And he's on the internet all over the place. Uh, his name is Gene Henderson, Gene Henderson. And, but he's uh, been passed since uh, 2005. 
but uh, his name lives on, and yeah. everybody knows him. <coughs> See, you guys are getting the uh, the, the full uh, full experience here from sourcing to, uh, to construction. <laughs>